Thank you, Denise. Uh, happy to be here to talk about Jamstack and your data. I am uh, Matt Billman, CEO and co-founder of uh, Netlify. And for those of you who don't know about Netlify, uh, we are aiming to build the fastest way to build the fast fastest sites and app. Um, we've built a cloud platform really centered around the Jamstack architecture for building for the web. If we take like a quick jump back in time and look at the at the evolution of of the web architecture way back in the day before the web we we started with the unix client server model where a client would just connect to a server open a long running socket and send commands back and forth we then moved to to the to sort of web stack that's been around around for for many many years now where a browser would talk to typically go through a set of load balancers, talk to web servers. We would have our main application servers that would talk to our database. And our app would really be centered around that idea of like our server and our database. The modern sort of web approach have really moved to a more decoupled model where we deliver a front end straight into the web browser from a global CDN. And then talk no longer to just one server or one service, but to all these different services. So we've really moved from, from that old client server model to a client services model. And this, this is what has really enabled this idea of a, of a Jamstack architecture, where we go from the monolithic architecture, where we have this request response cycle flowing through a whole, uh, a, a whole stack of different tiers of, of servers and databases, um, to a Jamstack architecture where we pre-build as much as we can up front, deliver it directly to the browser from the edge, and then talk to all these different APIs and services. Uh, and today I want to talk a bit of the data layer and the context of this architecture. But just again, uh, to talk a little bit about what, what we've done at, at, at Netlify, one thing we noticed was that once you embraced this Jamstack architecture, you would start relying on all these different vendors for like your staging environment, for CI, CD, for deployments, atomic uh, deploys, uh, rollbacks, you would need hosting somewhere. We started seeing the pattern of serverless functions for backend functionality, CDN providers, and you sort of had to stitch all of that together and maintain it yourself. At Netlify, we saw the opportunity to give developers one single seamless workflow from development to um, URL that encompasses all of these different layers with zero setup and zero maintenance and operations. When we talk about like web applications, we had this traditional model that, that I showed in the earlier slide where every request would essentially go to your application server, talk to your database, the server would do a lot of work and then send uh, just a bit of HTML that the browser could very easily render. On the other end of the spectrum, we started having the idea of the single page applications where the server would do almost no work, right? Like in many cases, you might just have a, a app shell in an HTML page delivered directly by a CDN into the browser. And then from there on, the browser will actually do all the work. The Jamstack approach tries to really introduce this idea of always having a compile step or a build step where you pre-compute as much as you can upfront, where we pre-build everything that can be pre-built and distribute that to the edge. So the server still has to do minimum work. We can get something into the browser incredibly fast, uh, but the browser also gets to do less work than, than, than with the full single page application model when viable. Um, and to build this, we've seen like these clear primitives uh, emerge that, that sort of the whole industry has started embracing. This idea of a front end that, that, that lives directly on a global edge network uh, with a build system that will push to that, to that edge network so your front end is pre-built and ready. And then this idea of cloud functions for the back end. Uh, AWS Lambda really re revolutionized that space and now uh, platforms like Netlify offer serverless functions that require no maintenance and operations. Um, and the front end will often talk to different APIs. The serverless functions will often talk to different APIs, like the canonical example is 
you might have a front end that talks directly to Stripe to do a lot of the initial credit card validation, set up everything. And then once you make a payment, you talk to a serverless function that has access to a Stripe secret and can talk to the actual Stripe uh, charging API endpoint uh, and trigger a charge. Around this architecture, around this decoupled architecture, we've started to see a, a whole ecosystem em emerge with so many different players from headless CMSs like Contentful and Sanity and Data CMS to all the different built tools and frameworks like Gatsby or Next or Eleventy or Noxt and the like um, to data providers like FaunaDB or now Datastax through Astra um, to search functionality like Algolia to e-commerce and so on and so on. Essentially, everything that we needed to build and maintain ourselves or integrate as a library is, is starting to turn into an API that we can call and communicate with. So what does that mean for the way we are actually building applications with the web? Uh, and uh, and how do we think about it? Let's take like a, a typical site that, um, that, that both have a bunch of pre-built material. Uh, this would be like a site with a product catalog selling, selling shoes. Um, we might have a build time step where we talk to different API for inventory sizes, customer raising prices and so on, and take everything we can put into a pre-built HTML page, build all of that out, distribute it to an edge network. And we get sort of an, an incredibly fast loading catalog where if everything come if anyone comes to a product through a Google search, they'll get a, a shoe in front of them in milliseconds, uh, which which we all know is incredibly beneficial for conversions, for engagement, for uh, user experience in general. Now obviously users will need more advanced functionality. Uh, search would be a, a typical function. You want to have faceted search, you might do price localization, you might do personalization, um, all of you might do recommended products, uh, other users that bought this shoes also bought this shoe or, or, or all these different features that might not be viable to run in a pre compute step. And those will delegate to JavaScript in the in the client we will talk to all these different APIs. Yeah, Algolia would be a typical choice for, for search. So we might even build our own serverless functions talking to a data layer that, that handles uh, some of these really dynamic functionalities. Now, thinking about that data layer and that stack, if we, if we go back to this slide around like the evolution of the web and look at the legacy web slide, I think everybody remembers back when back when we were working with this with this um, stack, how strong a word the database was. Uh, when I first learned to program dynamic websites, it was from tutorials on the MySQL documentation on database-driven websites. In the modern web diagram, all to the right, there is actually no database in the mix. There's just an, a, a CDN and all these different services. Um, if we if we look to the one option of this, um, we might just have our app at build time talk to services like Contentful and Shopify, and at runtime talk to services like Off Zero or Astra, or Fauna or Algolia for search. Um, we might and and each of these services, each of these APIs, obviously have their own database. Like Contentful is obviously a database for content. Off zero obviously persists all the user data in, in, in a database, but for users. So they've suddenly gone from being more uh, general purpose databases to being special purpose databases that includes both the compute needed for managing users or managing products and the data story and storage needed for that functionality. And then we've seen these uh, cloud databases or serverless databases where Astra is one of the latest really interesting examples to emerge um, that, that, that follow a similar pattern that we can talk to as if they were just another API, but for our data. So we've really gone from this older concept of having my app, my server, my database to 
a new world where we really just have our front end distributed all over the world and then our data split across all these different APIs and data sources. In a similar vein, we've also really gone from a world where where your database was something you really had to maintain and administrate. You would have your DBAs, you would know which kind of uh, instances, what kind of memory type did you want for your primary and for your secondary? How did you want to manage your backup strategy? Where would those backups live? How did you set up replica sets so you could back up from, from there? And how would restoration work and so on? As soon as you move to this world of services, you sort of, you sort of stop thinking about that. When, when you start using Contentful, you're not wondering about what's the instance sizes and what's the memory use for, for, for the hardware that Contentful are using, or what's the disk volumes for off zeros instances, what's the replication strategy for Algolia. You just expect to provision these services to, to set up a, an account there and then just use them and talk to them and store your content, persist your users, do your search. So at the web layer, we really went from this legacy stack where every website or, or web application had this whole layer of infrastructure, including provisioning and load balancing and auto scaling, monitoring system updates, all of this operational work in running this big monolithic application to the Jamstack approach where a service like Netlify can allow you to just focus on writing your code, working in Git, um, run your backend and serverless function, run your front end directly on the edge. And you no longer wonder about like provisioning and operations and application servers and maintaining load balancers and keeping state as you do rollouts and so on. In the same way, what I expect to see for the space of, of, of your data is that in a similar vein, we'll go from an old world where developers really had to think about your database, the provisioning, replication, the instance sizes, which regions are they running in? What's the disk space on your volumes? How are you handling backups and restores to a world where you provision data and then you just start writing data and querying data? And this is the world where, where all of these different data sources start coming along and where your data no longer starts living in your database, where you start having your idea of your globally distributed application, your front end, your user experiments, experiments. And then all these different data sources where some might be accessed at build time, some at runtime, some simultaneously, some directly from the browser, some through serverless functions. A lot of them will be a special purpose data, like tools like Off Zero or Shopify or Contentful or Stripe that comes not just with the data, but also with the compute and all the rules uh, around how to how to store and persist and work with users or products or subscriptions. But we'll also have uh, general purpose databases like uh, Astra or Fauna uh, or DynamoDB that, that follow some of the same characteristics where you no longer think about these databases so much as your database, but more as your data service that you just turn on and start talking to. One thing that we will see there is this layer of level of fragmentation where, uh, where we start seeing data live on a, across a lot of different formats, a lot of different query languages, a lot of different APIs and services. So another thing I expect that we'll start seeing more of in the future and that I feel is still very actively in movement and, and, in, um, and in involvement is, is this combination of, of both the new generation of, of serverless databases and also this new generation of unifying query languages uh, and query layers. We're starting to see some, some attempts of, of GraphQL sort of being the central graph for all your APIs and data layers where you can move across like data stored in, in behind Astra in a, in a Cassandra cluster or behind the Postgres with Hasura in front and, and query with, with the same query language. We, we're starting to see companies like Take Shape build content mesh products that can link uh, your data in Contentful and your data in Shopify 
and create bridges between them. We're seeing layers like one graph that can take all these different APIs and services and provide both authentication and querying and subscriptions on top of it. Uh, products like Hasura Cloud that, uh, that, that allows to connect lots of different data sources and give you one query endpoint. Uh, query languages or ORMs like Prisma that are really rethinking like, do we talk SQL or GraphQL or how do we actually talk to these data layers across different languages, but in a way that feels native to, to modern web developers. So these are the, these are all areas that that I'm ex extremely excited in in about following and uh, looking at the evolution of um, and really excited to be here at the uh, together with DataStacks today because the Aster product feels like one of those logical innovations in this space that can really help the 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 architecture move forward. So thank you so much uh, for listening in and have a great rest of your conference.